Hello, uh, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining this Paycheck Protection Program information session. I'm Dan Hammert, the Executive Director of the Utah Governor's Office of Economic Development, also known as GOED. Uh, super excited to have uh, Marla Trollin from the SBA with us, and she also has John Geegee from our office. We're uh, super, ex uh, I guess, we're, we're, we're very grateful to have such a great relationship with the SBA here in Utah and have uh, one of, I think, the closest relationships with our uh, federal partners uh, that we have here and um, very grateful for them being on this uh, information session and being willing to spend some time. Also have Miles Hansen on, President and CEO of the World Trade Center Utah, and uh, also appreciative of that organization and how it helps us and, and helps Utah businesses. Um, so what we're talking about today, we have the second round of PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program, which we're going to call PPP 2.0. Uh, on this information session. It authorizes the uh, U.S. Uh, Small Business Administration to guarantee additional loans to help Utah-based small businesses. Um, the economic aid to hard-hit small businesses, nonprofits, and Venues Act, I don't know what that acronym is, but it's hard, um, provides a $325 billion aid package to the hardest-hit small businesses, nonprofits, and venues struggling to recover from the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Most Utah small businesses, even those with just one employee, can qualify for PPP 2.0 assistance. If you have a corporate bank, your banker can help you apply for uh, this round of the PPP. If you don't have a corporate banker and want information on the program, including free one-on-one -on -one assistance, please visit coronavirus.utah.gov business. And hopefully that link is appearing somewhere magically uh, as I'm speaking. Uh, the state has assembled all the latest information at that site um, on the coronavirus site with links to other resources in a form where you can submit a request for assistance so a member of our rapid response team can follow up with you. The state's team includes the Swazo Business Center members, uh, and they'll help provide support to Utah's multicultural uh, business owners. Team members at the Small Business Administration are also standing by and can assist, answer questions, and can help with non-English speaking resources. PPP loans are made by lenders and they're guaranteed by the SBA. There are several participating lenders, including banks, credit unions, and FinTech lenders. Loans can be used to pay fixed debts, payroll, accounts payable, and other bills that can't be paid because of the pandemic's impact. PPP 2.0 funds are available on a first come, first served basis starting this Wednesday, January 13th. So you should plan now to be ready to apply for assistance as soon as it's made available. Um, we want Utah businesses to be well prepared and to secure our fair share of the federal PPP support. Um, prior to this role, I was a small business owner and went through round one of PPP personally, both the application side and the forgiveness process. And uh, can say as a small business owner, uh, it was uh, monumental in keeping our small business operating and running during this uh, pandemic time. And uh, with that, Miles, if you want to take it from there. Great, thank you, Dan, for that and for your leadership on this. Um, for anybody joining in, I just wanna uh, underscore how important the Paycheck Protection Program is for Utah companies. Like Dan mentioned, is, is we're all aware, this is PPP 2.0 uh, is what we're calling it. Um, and there were previous rounds back in April and May of this year, the state under the governor's leadership made significant efforts to uh, promote and publicize these PPP loans across the, the state of Utah. And it's interesting, as part of this effort, um, World Trade Center Utah and Swapto Business Center, the Salt Lake Chamber, EDC Utah, working closely with the SBA, was able to set up a, a rapid response team to provide one-on-one -on -one assistance to Utah companies. Over April and May, uh, my understanding is that the, the team assisted about 4,000 Utah companies. And there were partners across the state. The banks did a phenomenal job of getting the word out and helping Utah companies. And the result of all these efforts were that Utah, uh, was that Utah led the nation in utilizing the Paycheck Protection Loan Program as a percent of eligible payroll uh, during the first two rounds, back in April, May, June, and July. Per the SBA, those loans helped support and, and helped to sustain 800,000 jobs here in the state. That's half our workforce. And so an incredibly important program uh, the success with, with which Utah companies had in, in availing themselves of these benefits was a, a, an important factor 
in how well Utah has fared economically during the pandemic. And so when we saw that the, there was going to be a PPP 2.0 uh, program under unified command and under uh, leadership of the of governor's office of economic development, uh, all these partners that were involved in making an aggressive push the first time were asked to help set up a similar process. And so we've gone ahead and reassembled the rapid response team. They are volunteers from many organizations here in the state, including BOED and World Trade Center Utah and EDC Utah and the Swazo Business Center, the Salt Lake Chamber and many others. Uh, those volunteers have been trained um, and now they are uh, fielding requests for assistance from Utah companies. And you can request assistance at coronavirus.utah.gov slash business. And so I encourage anybody who's listening in, whether you're a small business, if you're a contractor, a sole proprietor, um, whether or not you know you're, if you're eligible or not, go to the website, read the information there, request assistance. And there's a team there that's uh, willing, able, and ready to help you learn more about the program and help troubleshoot, troubleshoot issues. And then if you have, you know, uh, challenges uh, particular to your organization that connect you, they can connect you to, to partners here in the state that can assist. And if you have technical questions, they can connect you to the SBA and the experts there. And we'll hear from Marla and John here in a minute. So please reach out, participate in the program. The last point I wanna make is if, if you're tuning in and you say, you know what, uh, we're a small business, we got our, our first round loan. Now we just have to go to our bank to get a second loan. That's great, encourage you to do that quickly. But please, for everybody, whether or not you need to personally uh, apply or begin the process uh, to start the process, um, think about people that you work with, whether it's clients, whether it's uh, people who I don't know, uh, mow your lawn or, or, or Dan or I don't have to worry about this too much, but maybe it's the person who cuts your hair. Uh, think about those people here in the state uh, that may not be plugged in to these programs and these opportunities to ass for assistance and let them know about it. Just on Saturday, we had a, a plumbing issue. So the plumber was there at my house and I, I talked to him and spent several minutes uh, breaking down the program for him and telling him where he could go to get assistance. And I encourage you to do the same. The, the more we're able to do that, the better we'll be able to help the state. And finally, um, we've mentioned the Swazo Business Center. They are a phenomenal resource for our multicultural community. And the state is making significant investments in ensuring that companies, regardless of what language they need assistance in, regardless of what ethnic community they are in, or how big or how small the, the business is, that the state's able to plug in and provide assistance to, to them. So we, uh, we're grateful to the Swazo Business Center for leading out on that effort. And again, we encourage everybody to reach out. You can get help in Spanish and Mandarin and get connected with people who speak a number of other languages. And so language will not be a barrier to get this type of assistance for companies here in the state of Utah. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and pass the baton over to our experts and uh, Marla Trollin and John Gee, who uh, Marla runs the uh, SB off, uh, district office here in Utah. They are phenomenal partners. I can't tell you how grateful we are to have them here in the state and they are the experts in all of this. And so Marla, I'll go ahead and pass the baton over to you and John, and we look forward to getting a, a few more technical details from the two of you. Okay, great. Can you can you hear me okay? Yes. Yep, I've got you loud and clear. Okay, great. Um, and John is loading up the presentation. One second, he's sharing. Okay, can you all see that? Yep, I can see it. Okay, per perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna run through um, not only the Paycheck Protection Program that just rolled out, Miles had mentioned, but also um, the uh, other COVID SBA funding that we have available. And a special thank you to uh, Dan and Miles for um, hosting this webinar and inviting us on. We do appreciate it. Okay. So um, we do offer a variety of different um, funding programs. Of course, the Paycheck Protection Program that um, Miles mentioned, the Economic Injury Disaster Loans, or what we call EIDL. Um, we also are going to be offering a Shuttered Venue Operator Grant, and I'll get into that in just a minute. Um, and then, of course, we have our regular loan programs, our 7A and our 504 loans. Uh, we are making enhancements to those as it pertains to COVID. And then um, I just wanted to um, quickly highlight our resource partners that are funded by SBA. That includes the Small Business Development Center network throughout the state. There are 15 different centers uh, located in rural areas as well as urban areas. 
And then we have two women's business centers, one here in Salt Lake and another one down in Cedar City. Okay. So, um, you know, I wanted to have this slide available so that um, folks could understand what they can and can't apply for, um, because many people applied for either a PPP in the past or an idle loan um, under the last round of funding. So um, you can't, and this still applies, you can't uh, apply for an idle loan and a PPP loan for the same purpose. Um, you can't have more than one second draw PPP loan and a second draw PPP loan is when a business had already received a PPP loan the first go around and they're wanting to apply for a second one. So that's what that means, a second draw PPP loan. Um, you also can't get a shuttered venue grant and a PPP loan um, under the funding as it uh, is now. Um, so the overarching points of our PPP program is that um, the funding, as Miles had mentioned and, and Dana mentioned, the funding is through our SBA participant lenders. Uh, we have about 435 lenders across the state um, that are working with us now, uh, many of them offering the, the PPP loans. It's a 100% guaranteed loan by SBA. Um, under this, this round of funding, it's available through March 31st, 2021. And uh, just, I just wanna emphasize that it's a first come first serve basis for these loans. So um, although the funding is set to, to go through March 31st, um, the funds may be extinguished sooner because again, across the country, small business owners are gonna be going out and trying to get a second PPP loan. Uh, so we really encourage our, our Utah businesses to get out in front of this. Uh, the covered period um, is a borrower may select from eight to 24 weeks. Um, and, and what that did is provide a whole lot more flexibility for the borrower as it pertains to the covered period. Um, second draw PPP loans are available, like I just mentioned. It also, um, the, this legislation also increased um, first draw PPP loans um, in some cases. Uh, and again, we're just getting into a simplified application process for loans up to 150,000 to make it much more streamlined and, and quick for um, those business owners to get the funding. And of course, this, uh, forgiveness benefits do apply. So the, the rollout as it stands now, um, our community financial institutions are offering the first um, PPP draw loans. Those were just rolled out today. Uh, we only have one CFI in the state um, that's offering this. And, um, and we can get into that if, if there are any questions on, on who is rolling that out. Um, and then they will be rolling out the second draw loans on Wednesday. Um, it will be opened up to all of our SBA lenders shortly thereafter, and may, maybe as early as Thursday. Um, and I wanted to just point out this new feature alert. Although this applies to lenders, I do want small business owners to be aware that um, the loans will have to go through a compliance check by SBA, and that may take a little bit of time. So. Um, if those small business owners are wondering what the delay is, um, SBA does have to do this compliance check. Okay, so um, this, the eligible entities, um, uh, this applies to both the first and second draw loans. So again, if a business is just applying for the first time for a PPP, this would apply, or if a business is getting a second PPP loan, this would apply. So um, eligible entities, small businesses, 500 employees or fewer under a first draw loan uh, and, and 300 or fewer employees under a second draw loan. Um, it also includes uh, tribal businesses, agricultural businesses, nonprofit 501c3s, uh, veteran organizations, sole proprietors, independent contractors, self-employed individuals, um, and the applicant must be in operation on or before February 15th, 2020. 
Okay, uh, so this is the new eligible entities under the PPP program, and they include housing cooperatives, chambers, 501c6, uh, local newspapers, television and radio stations, and destination marketing organizations. Um, and that includes a 501c organization or state or political subdivision of a state um, that's engaged in marketing and promoting uh, communities and facilities to businesses and leisure um, travelers. Ineligible entities um, include small business types, um, and, and I don't necessarily need to get into all the specifics there outlined, but it, it, it is um, specific types of businesses that aren't eligible. It also includes businesses engaged in, of course, in illegal activity or businesses whose 20% uh, or more owners have legal issues um, that SBA can identify. It also um, includes ineligible businesses or owners that have currently defaulted on federal loans. Um, so, you know, this would, of course, if you received a, a 7A loan, say by SBA in the past, and you've defaulted on that loan, you are not going to qualify. Um, ineligible entities, as I mentioned before, also includes entities who received a shuttered venue grant. So, um, Businesses are going to have to look real closely on what funding options are available and decide whether or not they prefer, for example, to get a shuttered venue grant or a PPP loan. Um, publicly traded entities uh, do not qualify, um, as well as entities that have been permanently closed. So if a small business owner is saying, well, I had to shut down my business for several months, they want to reopen they won't qualify. And of course, any in, in bankruptcy. Um, use of uh, loan proceeds um, under the first and second draw loans um, includes uh, payroll costs. So 60% of the, the loan should be used for payroll costs. That includes salary, wages, uh, vacation, sick leave, severance pay, healthcare benefits, retirement benefits, um, et cetera. It also now in blue there includes group insurance payments. So I was trying to highlight on here the new um, features or the new enhancements under this program, and those are what you see in blue there. So um, proceeds could also have been in, in the past and still apply mortgage interest payments, rent and utilities, interest on pre existing debt, and refinancing of your idle loan. Um, what they've enhanced it to uh, also include is operations expenditures, property damage costs, supplier costs, and worker protection expenditures and adaptive measures. And that may include um, plexiglass, that may be, you know, businesses that put in place or uh, drive through for restaurants, that type of thing. Um, so under the first draw loans, um, these loans go up to $10 million, um, and it's going to be based on a formula that we'd be looking at. It's two and a half times the applicant's average monthly payroll costs over the last 12 months. Um, and this, this was applied to the last round of PPP, so that's not new. Um, the maturity is still five years. It's a 1% interest rate and a complete payment deferment. On the second draw loans, um, these loans will go up to $2 million. Uh, it's also based on a, a formula. And um, again, two and a half times the applicant's average monthly payroll cost over 12 months. Um, but the, the, the blue there, the three and a half times for businesses with NAICS code 72, which includes accommodations and food services, is a new enhancement, okay? So that's a new um, sort of uh, term that we're looking at now. The maturity rate is five years, interest rate is 1%, and we've also made it easier for employees to use a 12-week, um, to for seasonal employers to look at a 12-week period from February 15, 2019 to February 15, 2020. There are some additional requirements here, and I gotta be quick because we're running out of time, but um, they uh, must be eligible for and previously received a PPP first draw loan in order to get a second draw loan. Um, 
they have or will use a full uh, loan amount only for el eligible expenses under the PPP second draw loan. Um, again, they can't have more than 300 employees, and they must demonstrate at least a 25% reduction in gross receipts between comparable quarters in 2019 and 2020. Um, so here's kind of the requirements for the application process. You obviously would work with your SBA lender, submit these um, two separate forms, depending on what loan you're looking at, um, gather your payroll documentation, you get a required certification, um, and then gather uh, revenue loss documentation for a second draw loan. And let's see, and you can work with your SBDCs and, and women's business centers on this application process. Okay, specifics on forgiveness. Um, again, we, we're, I think we're kind of running out of time here, but I just wanted to say that there are some um, new items there in blue. Uh, covered period is eight to 24 weeks on the borrower's choosing. Idle advances will not be deducted from forgiveness. Um, a lender received forgiveness payment with an idle advance deducted to SBA, then we'll, we'll get that funding back to the lender who will give it to the, the borrower and or um, they will subtract it from the loan balance. And um, we're working on an application, as I mentioned, for that as well. Um, so the shuttered venues is, is through the Office of Disaster Assistance. It goes up to $10 million. Um, you can get a second grant of up to 50% of the amount of the first grant. Um, the, there are, this has to be used for payroll costs, rent, utilities, PPE. Um, you can't use it for real estate, relending, political contributions, et cetera. And it's going to be um, a calculation that we'll take into account when we're looking at uh, how much funding you would receive. Um, the eligible entities include live venue operators, uh, theaters, live performing arts organizations, museums, zoos, um, theater operators, talent representatives, et cetera. They have to be fully operational on February 29, 2020. Um, and then we're going to lo be looking at a variety of other things. This program has not rolled out yet, and so um, we will be getting further guidance and um, procedural notices, et cetera, on that um, within probably the next week or so. Uh, economic injury disaster loans. I think most folks are, are aware of this program. We've had it offered now for, for quite some time. Uh, additional funding has been um, dedicated to this to, to um, get it through the end of this, this calendar year. Um, and, and so I don't necessarily need to get into all the specifics on this. Just quickly though, it goes up to $2 million. It's a 3.75% uh, interest rate for small businesses and 2.75% for nonprofits, maturity of 30 years. Okay. Idle grants, I think most of you are aware of that as well. Um, this grant amount goes up to $10,000. A couple of new um, features that we've added in for entities in low income communities, they can receive the full $10,000 um, because typically it was $1,000 per employee that will be um, way for uh, low income communities. And then also for low income communities that received an idle advance, they will receive additional funds up to the 10,000. So if they received $2,000 um, last time, they will be able, eligible for another 8,000. Um, the covered period goes through, um, like I said, the end of this year, uh, and then um, it will be subtracted from your idle amount, but the grant will not be reduced from forgiveness amount of your PPP. Okay, and, and here's just some contact information for you, including our uh, rapid response team that Miles mentioned earlier. Um, we encourage folks to sign up for our uh, e-newsletter as we're sending out interim final rules and um, procedural notices and applications and forms, et cetera, on pretty much a daily basis. So um, please sign up for our online newsletter and, and you can also go to the uh, coronavirus um, gov website that Miles mentioned. Hey, hey, Dan, Dan, I I, yeah, I just saw that. Sorry, my fault. I should yeah, anyway. Uh, Marla, I was going to say, I don't know if you can see the chat questions, and I'm happy to read them if you want. But you might be the best person to uh, answer them. The, there's there's only looks like four questions in the chat bar. Can you see those? Or do you want me just to read them? Yeah, we can see. Them. Yeah, we can see them now. Thank you. Do Do you mind addressing those? Yep. 
We'll take care of them. And and do you want to do it live right here, or how do you want to do it? Oh, um, yeah. We do you want to go ahead and do that? Sure. Yeah, so we we can go a little bit long. I think you, it it's probably helps to answer these live if these people are watching and asking these questions. Let's if we can, let's go ahead and answer them. Okay, I'll let John do this. Go ahead, John. Well, the first question: Do we need to reapply if we have previously reapply previously applied? Um, if, if you're referring to the idle loans, um, if you previously applied, you would not reapply for that or the advance. Um, your, your application would still be in the system. They're, they're taking a long time to process those. If you're talking about a PPP loan, uh, if you got a first draw loan already, um, if, if you want a second draw loan yet, yeah, you have to apply for that separately. Uh, if you haven't got the first one yet, yeah, you can you can go in and submit an application for first draw too. I hope that answers that. Uh, I would like to know who the CFI lender is in Utah. I believe that's Golden West Federal Credit Union. Mm -hmm. So we have been in contact with them today and they're gearing up to be ready. And and, and it, the application portal is live for them right now for first draw loans. And on Wednesday, they'll be live for them for second draw loans. Uh, could you show us how to put an inquiry to the rapid response team? Um, again, go to that website uh, that, that we've shown before, the uh, coronavirus.utah.gov slash business, and there should be a live link there. I don't know if anybody's got – I'm not sharing my screen anymore, but, Miles, is it pretty prevalent on that page? Yeah, it, and, you know, just for the sake of uh, being innovative, let me see if I can share my screen. Looks like I can't share my screen, but, yeah, so – if you go to that, the coronavirus.utah.gov slash business website, you'll scroll down a little bit and big and bold that says new paycheck protection program. You click on a button right there that says learn more. And then it brings you to the pay paycheck protection program page. Lots of good information on there. You'll scroll down a bit and you'll see a section uh, where it uh, flags the rapid response team as a, as a resource. It says contact the rapid response team by filling out this form in English or Spanish. You choose English or Spanish. I'm pulling up the English one now. And then right there, it's a short form, uh, just contact information, name of your business. Is it for profit or not a nonprofit or an individual like a contractor? And then you put your question in there. And how do you prefer to be contacted? Phone, email, or either or, phone or email. And you submit that. And what happens behind the scenes when that goes in, uh, we've got all these volunteers trained up. They're monitoring the inbox. And so you typically within a couple hours, somebody in the team, they'll see you, see your request. They'll open it up. They'll read up on your issue. And then they'll reach out by phone, email, text. We've charged the team with not just, you know, providing information, but really plugging in, solving problems, providing solutions. And so you should expect some back and forth with the team. Is they're helping you get what you need? And again, that these are a team of volunteers. Once you get to the level of, of needing real professional uh, support. They can get you connected over with Marla and John at the SBA and their team, or to the Small Business Development Centers, a network of experts across the state who can then take a look at your books and, and provide a little bit more in-depth. Okay, this is Miles. Um, the, another question on the 25% gross receipts reduction, is there any leeway on that? Um, the only leeway really is you can pick which quarter. So you can pick first quarters in 19 and 20, second quarters in 19 and 20, but it does have to be a 25% reduction. There may be some more guidance that comes out in the future on that. Uh, but as far as we know, you just, it has to be, you have to compare those quarters. And, and just on that, um, you know, we have received some questions as to, can we, can we take a first quarter from, um, one year and a third quarter from the next year? And the answer is no, it has to be um, a comparable quarter as you're looking at the two separate years. Uh, question five, when can we apply? As we said, it's already open for the CFI. Uh, after this week, we suspect it'll be open for all lenders, the, the lending portal, so they can get your applications in price starting early next week. Although we would suggest now get to your lenders right now, start getting the documentation together um, for your payroll. For your, if you're going for the second draw, get your uh, documentation for the 25% reduction in revenue 
that kind of stuff. So start gearing up now. Um, is there a second round of idle? Um, the idle loans itself, that's a permanent program of SBA. So there's always appropriations for those idle loans. You can apply for that. Uh, the, the idle advance itself is a special program. There's another, I believe, $20 billion at this uh, economic aid. Yeah, it's $20 billion for, um, under this new legislation. Um, but I just want to point out, and John is right, that the idle program is something that um, has existed for a long time under SBA. However, the funding for COVID um, will go through the end of this calendar year for idle. So just keep that in mind. Yep. Hey, and John and, and, and Marla, let's go through question 11 and let's cut it off there. Okay. Is that okay? You bet. And, and any outstanding question, please just go to the website and I'll repeat it again in a minute. And you can submit those to the rapid response teams and we need the answers or, or the SBA. So. so question 11, are the payroll numbers based on last year's numbers or the last 12 months? Uh, under the new legislation, you can pick 2019 or 2020, or you can pick the 12 month period directly before you apply for the loan. And and John, sorry, I, I probably was confusing there. Let's go ahead and still answer seven, eight, nine, and 10. Oh, okay. Oh, oh through 11. I'm just okay. saying they'll stop at 11 because they're just there still, they'll keep coming in, we'll be here all night. <laughs> okay. Question seven, when does the shutter venue grant open? We are not sure yet. We're waiting further guidance on exactly how that will be administered by our Office of Disaster Assistance. And and I suspect that they'll, they'll have an application portal on their website, just like they do for the idle loan program. Uh, and we'll try to get that information out as soon as possible when that, that's available. I think they're anticipating it within the next week. I mean, they're working hard to get that set up. Question eight, is Zion's a CFI ready to go on the first app for PPP? No, they do not qualify as a CFI. And they reached out to us specifically to ask and they're, they're not. Uh, are the loans based on business credit? Um, no, it's, it's not based on the, the repayability analysis does not apply for uh, PPP loans. Question 10, can a business apply for the same quarter of 2020-2000 on a second round application as they did for the first round application? I believe the answer is yes for that. Okay, and, and thank you, John and Marla, for that. That was an excellent presentation, and, and thanks for asking those, those questions live. Um, for, for, for the rest, you know, there are some outstanding questions, and I apologize, we're gonna get to them, but uh, for up-to-date information, to answer any question you have, or even to receive one-on-one -on -one assistance from the state's rapid response team, as we've discussed, please go to coronavirus.utah.gov slash business. Um, and thanks for watching this information session, particularly thanks to the SBA, thanks to the World Trade Center Utah, Marla, John, uh, Miles, thanks so much for, for this. Uh, feel free to share this with, uh, or from GoEd's Facebook or YouTube channels with anyone you know who may be interested, who might benefit from this information. Uh, at GoEd, we're here to help Utah businesses succeed and provide economic opportunities to Utahns. We wish you all the best. We encourage all of you to uh, check for el eligibility, to go through the application process. Uh, you have very little to lose uh, as, you, as you work through this. Uh, as I mentioned at the outset, uh, personally applied for the EIDL uh, advance, EIDL loan, and the PPP, uh, I guess we're saying first draw loan and uh, the application processes, they are, they are underwriting processes, but they are not, not overwhelming for a small business owner who's wearing a thousand different hats. And, uh, and going through the forgiveness process, that's not overwhelming either. Uh, it's a great program. It's a great bridge for businesses to get through these challenging times. And we're, we're appreciative for um, the federal government for making them available and for our local SBA office being a great partner in assisting and uh, also just to mention you again, Miles, uh, for World Trade Center Utah and, and all your help. Uh, uh, best best of, 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 you know, best wishes going into this new year and for years to come. Uh, and we'll, we'll end this here. So take care. Thank you.